Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting equation. An equation that looks almost impossible to solve. Why? Because it's super transcendental, super non-standard, don't you think? We have y plus ln y on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we have x plus e to the power of x. And what's our goal? To solve for y, of course, to be able to express y as a function of x. Can that be done? What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comment section down below without looking at the end of the video. Okay, so let's get started. We have this interesting equation, which I kind of thought about, so I, I think it's my idea, but anyone can come up with something like this, obviously. Maybe someone else came up with this, I don't know. But here's where we are, and we have a really like a mixture of different things. We have the natural log, we have the exponential, some polynomials, so it's pretty mixed, right? So how do you extract y from here? So we're gonna talk about an interesting method that we apply to many problems, and I've done quite a few problems on this, and I think recently also, there was a problem that we used it on, on my other channel, which is A plus BI. In case you didn't know, I have a channel dedicated to complex numbers. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't done so already. Maybe that's where you came from. Sometimes I get people from different channels. If you, that's the case, let us know. Just say hi in the comment section, all right? So our goal is to solve for Y, and how do we do that? Looking at this expression, if I try to solve for Y like directly without using anything special, it's going to be impossible. Why? Because we have an ln y. For example, even if I didn't have the ln y, suppose I had something like this, right? Or maybe some, well, suppose I had something like this. This would be easy. Why? We could just do e to the power of both sides and boom, it's done, right? Easy. Because e to the power ln y is equal to y. But when y and ln y are mixed together, how do you isolate y, right? I mean, I can isolate y and write it as y equals, okay, I solved for y, here we go. When solving for y basically means there should be no y on the other side, y should be totally left alone. So this, is, this doesn't count, okay? It is a cheap solution. So let's go ahead and see how we can do it. And there's actually a very magical, maybe a mathematical method, a little bit of hocus pocus here, but once you know the technique, hopefully you're gonna be able to apply it to very many situations. A lot of times I get comments from viewers, and thank you very much for your comments because they're almost, like all of them, almost all of them are beautiful. Once in a while, one, one in a thousand, maybe I'll get a negative comment and it's perfectly fine. But uh, you know, in your comments, you always mention that, oh, I learned a lot of techniques. Maybe you prepare for Olympias or you, you know, you're in college or maybe you graduated 40 years ago, doesn't matter what age group you are. Hopefully we all enjoy doing math. Right? Great, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the problem. We, since we have y plus ln y, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to do e to the power of both sides. Again, on my other channel, I made a video, go ahead and check it out, but here's how it goes. We're gonna do e to the power of both sides, and why does this work? Let me also tell you, because this is important. Whenever you do something in math, you have to justify it. I mean, at least you need to know the justification. Of course, professors will ask you to write down each step and justify it, but in general, you kinda need to know what you're doing and you need to make sure it's uh, mathematically legitimate. And in this case, it is, because when you have something like two inputs, you can basically input these into a function that's well-defined like e, and the e equation will be maintained. Make sense? Okay, so in this case, that's what we're doing. But the good thing about that is now we have the sum of two exponents, which splits, right? Whenever you have something like e to the power a plus b, you should know that this splits into e to the a times e to the b. Of course, vice versa, it's both sided, right? So it's a really cool thing because now you can split it up into e to the y times e to the ln y, which is beautiful. And this other guy here is gonna be split into e to the x times e to the e to the x, like a double exponential, okay, a tower. Great, at this point, again, you can use a little bit of, um, what's it called, reasoning, logical reasoning, and find the answer, like, boom, right away, maybe, right? Or you just need to continue, right? So can I safely say that, okay, if y is equal to, this is what I'm thinking. If y is equal to x, this is gonna work partially, 
But then ln y also needs to be e to the x. But if y is equal to x, ln y is not going to be e to the x because that would imply ln y equals ln x, which is not necessarily true. It just implies y equals x, but we don't know that, right? So it's not always true, in other words. Because if y and x are... Anyway, you get the idea, hopefully. I shouldn't talk too much. Or could it be the other way around, maybe? Maybe y is equal to... So let's back up a little bit here. Maybe it's not that way. It's the other way, like this. Maybe y is equal to e to the x, and ln y is equal to x. Well, if y is equal to e to the x, then ln e to the x becomes x. Oh, that looks like a solution, so let's write it down. Maybe y equals e to the x is a solution. Let's just take note, and then we'll kind of look at the answer, what we get at the end, because I'm about to show you something pretty interesting, okay? So, here's what we're going to do. We're, after you split this, this is going to turn into y. So, y e to the y. And this is going to turn into e to the x times e to the e to the x. Now, I want to introduce a very special function. Ta-da! Lambert's W function. Lambert's W function takes something like t e to the t. I now want to use a generic variable here. But I'll apply it to our scenario. And that gives us a t as an output which is awesome, right? Kind of mathematical. Yes, it's like hocus pocus. So why not use that approach here, apply Lambert's W on both sides, and see what happens, right? Okay, now I'll apply W here, and again, by the dual defineness of functions, this can be done. If two inputs are equal there, then you can input them into a function. And from here, we get the following. When you apply, W on y e to the y, it's going to give you y and don't ask why, okay? And on the right-hand side, what is my t, right? You might be questioning. Here, it was easy. Here, this is going to be your t, if you really think about it, because this will give you t times e to the t. Make sense? So that should be t, which is e to the x. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? So we got y equals e to the x as an answer, but even without Lambert's W function, we were able to get that. But is there another solution, right? That's a good question to ask. But before, I want you to think about it, and are there any other solutions, and under which conditions would there be other solutions? I highly recommend that you look up uh, Lambert's W function or uh, something that's known as product log, which is what uh, Wolfram Alpha uses. You know, uh, one word, by the way. And if you put something like this, for example, it'll give you a T. So this replaces W in Wolfram Alpha world. Okay, great. So Y equals E to the X works. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out what Wolfram Alpha gives us, right? Let's see what it says. And now we'll compare our answer to that one. All right, here we go. And the arrows basically means that I should now forget to continue. Those are for me, so don't worry about it. And now, first of all, before we get into the graph of the situation, I want to show you integer solutions. Obviously, there are integer solutions for this, but they're very limited. But also, look at the solution that Wolfram Alpha provides. It's not y equals e to the x, is it? Well, here's the thing. Wolfram Alpha leaves it as... W of something. If you split it up, you're going to realize, hey, this is the same thing as that. And as you know, this is equal to e to the x. So y should equal e to the x. But Wolfram Alpha can't do it because it's just a uh, lousy uh, large language model. Whatever. Humans are better still, right? Okay. Next page is going to show you something interesting. It is the graph of this. By the way, it's not the graph of Lambert's W function. This is the graph of y plus ln y equals x plus e to the x. Now you might be thinking like, what are all these dots? And I wanted to make it a little bigger so you can see them. Because when you zoom out or zoom in in Desmos, this is Desmos by the way, in case you didn't know, those dots will disappear. Those are kind of like discontinuities. So in other words, you do see y equals e to the x as a curve but you also see other points that are not on that curve. Why do we see them? Where do they come from? Comment section down below. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out A plus B, I, and bye-bye.